How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and welcome to another episode of my Expert Mode Boss series where each episode I'll show you my tips and tricks for how to conquer the various Expert Mode Bosses in Terraria. As always, we'll take a look at my recommended items, arena setup and potion strategy to give you your best chance to tackle these amazing boss fights. We've got a lot to do this episode guys, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start, as always, by setting up our arena for the battle. And you'll notice I've got two platforms here already, because when you start the fight, Skeletron immediately chases you, and what you need to be able to do is quickly get on top of the dungeon. So you've got one platform to walk out on, and another one to grapple jump up onto the top here. What we're going to do next is actually make a nice even plane along the top of the dungeon here. And you can achieve this just with a nice straight platform. So what I'm actually going to do is do a quick speed up because uh, I'm sure you guys have seen me build arenas lots of times now. I'll just go over some optional things you'll include. Two campfires is really useful. Two sunflowers, one each end of your arena is fantastic for bonus speed. This is optional but you might want to do it if you're not confident in your dodging. Adding four honey buckets, two on each side to make little honey bars. So I'll speed this up guys and then we'll have a look at the finished job. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got a little honey bath, a sunflower, and a campfire. And then on the other side, we've got the same deal. So it doesn't matter where you are in the arena, you've got plenty of buffs all the time. And the platforms are 16 blocks apart here. And I find no matter what grappling hook you're using, that's going to give you a nice dodge room and the ability to easily grapple to the next platform. And <laughs> as I miss two grapple jumps in a row. Uh, grapple jumping, by the way, is when you are jumping, grapple, and you jump just before you hit the top of the platform, you'll actually not lose any momentum at all and jump straight through it. It's a technique that's worth using, you'll notice I use it a lot, and coupled with Cthulhu's dash, you can really speed up your character. Um, I still miss them occasionally, but as you can see, once you get used to it, you get a lot of mobility with uh, just a grappling hook and a Cthulhu shield. Now that our arena is set up, it's time to look at some class gear. And I've set it up like last time with the four classes represented here. Uh, for warriors, you're going to want shadow or crimson armor. I don't really think you need molten if you've been working on your dodging and grappling, uh, but get it if you want. And you want to use the ranged melee options, like yo-yo or flamering. Uh, you can also use the thorn chakram from the jungle, um, but I've got flamering for a bit more damage. Alright, uh, for rangers, crimsons are the only damage boosting set for archers before the dungeon itself. Um, otherwise, just get any high tier metal or like gold or platinum or something like that. And Bees Knees Hive Pack is a tough combo to argue with. It's very, very useful. And just stock up on wooden arrows. Uh, for mages, uh, I like the Gem Robe uh, Magic Hat combo. I used it in my Wolfgang series. You can also use the Jungle set. It's really up to you what you want to go with. Although I, I liked having the very big mana pool for this. Um, use your gems to make a stronger staff rather than a stronger robe because the robe increase isn't as much as the damage you get from the staff. Uh, you can also use Water Bolt if you've lucked out and got one on the top level of the dungeon. Be careful of using the B gun, its damage is very low. Skeletron's hands have 14 armor, which means you're not going to be doing a lot of damage to the hands and they have 1400 health so just be mindful of that. For summoners you want to use B gear um, like you would normally fight Queen B before Skeletron and I've got the Imp Staff and the Hornet Staff. Be mindful of the Hornet Staff even though you get three Hornets uh, even with summoner gear on it only does 12 damage. Again Skeletron's hands have 14 armor in uh, Expert so just be very careful about that. Your Hornets may not do a lot of damage Imps are probably the way to go there. Alright, so I'm going to be showcasing Warrior today. So we've got the Flamerang. And we also, for accessories, 
the only two I've got as must-haves are the obsidian skull and the white string. The reason for this, guys, is you can actually reforge them as many times as you want because you can make them. So if you don't have the goblin yet, you can make white string over and over until you get warding. Obsidian skull, just take the first good armor buff you get because obsidian's a bit rarer than uh, cobwebs, obviously. And then just whatever hodgepodge of accessories you've got. Cthulhu shield is a must for the dash ability, um, and you should have that by now anyway. The last thing to talk about is potions. And really, the only three you really need for this fight, in my opinion, if any at all, is just Iron Skin, Regen, and Swiftness. Uh, remember, this is pre-hard mode, so you don't have access to some of the hard mode potions yet, unless you've lucked out and you found them in a shadow chest or through fishing. Um, the recipes are here, so they're very easy to make the three different potions. And uh, you can get the Dryad by this stage of the game. So pumpkin pie is always good for its massive uh, boost, uh, or for the how long the uh, buff lasts for. So that's pretty much it guys, once you've got all that ready, you are set to go. Let's fight this boss and have a look at strategy. The night time is here, it is time to fight the Skeletron. So, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to get him started, throw our buffs on, and because we prepared that platform in advance, we can get straight up to our arena. Alright. So at the start of the fight, you just firstly want to stabilize a little bit and just get the feel for your arena, uh, get the feel for his hand attacks. Uh, he's pretty quick with them. When he does his spin like this, you want to fall down from the platform or grapple up and use your Cthulhu shield to get out of its way. Um, it's a really cool way to get, get out of his way nice and quickly. So you just notice I just dodged him then with the Cthulhu dash as well. So, I'm showing Boomerang just for a bit of variety here, although I would argue that the Amazon Yo-Yo is going to be your better melee option. Uh, the Boomerang can actually damage the head early on, which is kind of nice, um, but the Amazon does more consistent damage to the hands. So I guess, see what you want to do. If you want to challenge yourself, try the Boomerang. Uh, if you're just looking to get this fight uh, out of the way, then yeah, maybe stick with the Amazon. It is probably... Mm, it's probably a bit more enjoyable with the Amazon too, uh, just because you don't have to aim so much. <laughs> and if you miss with the yo-yo, it can be a bit disastrous. <laughs> uh. Anyway, the first goal is just to avoid damage as much as possible. Try not to use your potion charges until you fall down to about 200 health. Um, because remember, your potions will take a full th uh, 60 seconds to uh, refresh. And that's a lot of time without a heal. So if you can regenerate naturally, then that's a lot better way to do it. Okay guys, so we're at the part of the fight where the hands are almost dead. Your goal should be to kill both hands almost at the same time. Because you'll notice as soon as you do, he starts to shoot these uh, homing skulls. I actually feel this is the easier part of the fight to be honest. Um, even though the skulls seem hard at first, if you keep using the same strategy you were using up until now, uh, you should be fine. Oh, okay, that was bad. <laughs> but that's why you hang on to your potion charge. If you make an error, um, you can easily recover. Now, the skulls follow like a bit of a... They home, but they're not... Um, they don't instantly lock onto your position. They sort of sweep in an arc. So if you just keep moving slowly, uh, you should be able to avoid a lot of the skulls, which is nice. So you see it's sort of slowly catching up to me. And if you dodge... Uh, underneath him, you can actually just sort of play around dodging the skulls a lot easier. And yeah, it makes it a lot easier that way. However, just be careful if you stay too close to him and he starts his spin attack. Actually, I might even demonstrate it. If you get stun locked, you can just grapple away from him and Cthulhu dash, and that'll save you from getting insta killed by him. Uh, I remember one of the first times I fought him, I'm like, no, I can't get away. I wish I had a cobalt shield. <laughs> And 
we've pretty much got him here. So it can be a longer fight unless you're using the strongest weapons available and armor. But uh, as you can see, it's possible with uh, just shadow armor um, and just some basic accessories. I'm not using anything too special. Just an Amazon. I don't even have the best modifier on it. And buffs, I just use the basic buffs. So yeah, it's, it's more about just being really mobile, dodging when you can, not panicking during the fight. Uh, you'll see, you saw a few times I got caught in his stun lock. You just grapple out of it and dash away and you'll be fine. You should only take about 150 damage if you do that. And it wouldn't be a happy days video unless we open treasure. So, ready? Three, two, one, boom! <gasps> Book of Skulls! That's amazing! <laughs> wow, I think that's like a 10% drop chance. I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, and that bone glove, oh my god, it's an amazing weapon. Wow, you got to try it if you haven't yet. Alright guys, thanks as always for watching another of my expert mode boss tutorials. Let me know in the comments which boss you'd like to see next. And you know what gets me really excited guys? Like once we're all like amazing at expert mode, you know one day you'll be smashing Moon Lord no problems at all in expert. I was thinking that uh, maybe we can start doing like ridiculous challenges like no armor expert mode and just like keep upping the challenge until it gets like ridiculously impossible like and that's what I'm really looking forward to so I love sharing the knowledge with you guys I want you all to be amazing at this game like I'm still learning all the time too but uh, it's exciting because as the skill level of everyone improves the challenges get more and more extreme and that's really fun for me I love that all right so it's time for some shout outs as always and our first one is from Augustus and I think it's sing on the end I've asked me saying a yarn voice. If there are so many biomes, why isn't there cookie biomes? That'd be awesome. Ah, oh, cookie mod. I was just looking at a mod pack, to be honest with you. And I was reading, like, there's like a mod loader or something. And it says you can make your own mods. And I was thinking, oh my god, I would love to try my hand at that. I think that would be awesome. Um, like, I don't know, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a lot to it. But uh, it sounds like a really fun hobby, so I'm going to investigate it, guys. Our next one is from Andy Shaders, and have asked me to say... Oh, it's a joke. Alright, okay, you ready? Alright, so what's Helena's favourite fruit? And... Have a think. And the answer is... Archeries! And then, <laughs> you know, like, archery? Ah, uh, cherry? Ah, uh, cherries? <laughs> oh, that's so bad. Oh, I love it. <laughs> See, bad jokes can be okay. It's just in how you say them. <laughs> oh, I don't know. They're like the sort of things you get on those Christmas um, bonbon things, like the jokes you get in them. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. That was good. Our next one is from Patchy Plays, and have asked me seen a Darth voice. <laughs> Cookie. I am your father. Oops. I mean, I ate your father. And the cookie's like, no! <laughs> oh, I like that. I can see that as a vine. <laughs> uh, our next one is from Elaine Raphael de Guzman. And, oh, it's a tongue twister. Oh my gosh, tongue twisters. Alright. Ready? This is just one big long one. I've got to try and do it in one go. Alright. The two tipple twins tied tiny twine to 12 teachers tipping track trance. Oh, I almost got it. So it was the two Tibble twins tied tiny twine to 12 teachers tipping Trek tents. I think I said Trents at the end. <laughs> Thanks Elaine, that was a good one. And our last one today is from Jesse Robertson. And it asked me to see a boulder voice. Oh gosh, boulders, boulders, boulders. It asked me to see. Hi, Happy. I'm a cookie. <laughs> oh, trying to trick us. It's not going to work, boulders. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> Alright, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video, click that like button and show your support. Uh, don't forget for comments. Ooh, last prison versus Wyvern. <laughs> no, that's not the comments. Um, don't forget for comments. Uh, let me know what bosses you'd like to see next. Or just say hi. Or all the usual awesome stuff that we always chat about in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, click the little HD icon in the bottom right corner. Here's the most important part, as always. You will stay happy, and I'll see you soon. This is Happy Day signing out. See ya! Boom, boom, boom. I'm out of mana! <laughs> I, got, I normally shoot something when I say see ya. There you go. See ya! <laughs>
Alright, now let's find out where this lava is. Mr. Lava! <gasps> oh goodness! Okay, we've got to heal off. Nice. Oh, he's about to go in his last form. Oh, what are we- No! 